What's up, everybody? I'm Russell Taylor, and welcome to this episode of Silversations, where I have my homie, Deborah Bond, here on the couch. Welcome, Deborah Bond. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. So, let's get right to it. Yes. Where are you from? Originally from New Haven, Connecticut, mm. Elm City, as they call it, <laughs> a.k.a. Gunwave in New Haven. Gunwave in New Haven. Uh, I've heard a story. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Born and raised. Um... That's, that's where all my peeps are. And how did you end up D.C.? D.C.? Uh, 17, came down oh. to study uh, journalism and music at American University. You a baby. I was a baby yeah. and um, fell in love with the city, like mm -hmm. straight up. I mean, first of all, it's a huge contrast between Connecticut mm -hmm. and D.C., mm -hmm. especially in the 90s. Um, so, yeah, came down to D.C. and just everything about the city. Just fell in love, like, mm, just became enamored with everything about it so so let me ask you when you when you came down to DC were you interested in music when you started at college was it like I have to do this it was but you know my mom was really like um, that's not gonna be your point of focus <laughs> she's like think about whatever ever else you want to do in life and we'll put music on the side we can we can dabble in that but you gotta have another focus so that was journalism shout out to black parents <laughs> because my parents said the same thing they were yeah. like okay this is great but mm -hmm. we need to get your papers first yes get so. your papers first so I, I focused on broadcast journalism mm -hmm. and uh, minored in vocal performance and melted both worlds together for quite a while before things really started kicking off mm -hmm. but um, DC this, the music scene, you know, was really thriving. There were so many bands. It felt like a, a band city. There was mm -hmm. everything from a group called Fertile Ground in oh, Baltimore yeah. mm -hmm. and all the, you know, all the go-go was popping. Right. And, um, Divine Nature, Mother's Milk, as they call right. themselves. So many groups. So I wanted a piece of that action. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to be a part of that. Even while I was in school and trying to figure my way out in the city, I knew I was going to dive in eventually. So. And so all, hearing all that music and being exposed to this particular area, mm -hmm. that, especially Go-Go and mm -hmm. Mother's Milk and so forth, that is, would you say that's how it shows up? That is an influence in your music now? Totally. Especially like the drums, the uh, percussion. Yeah. I immediately met drummers. Yep. I immediately met drummers. So many of them who are mm -hmm. talented. Some that performed, you yeah. know, right here for Soul for Sations. Right. Um, and so, yeah, DC's the, the percussive energy, uh, even the world of gospel that was thriving here mm -hmm. um, really kind of seeped into the musicians that I decided to work with. Um, and I was a little teeny bit resistant to go-go when I first moved here because I'm from, I'm from the north, right, so I wasn't right. really used to it. And the more musicians I met, the more I started to fall in love with the sound and the more the sound became almost a part of some of my music. Right, so. Right. Uh, Every, everything about the music community when I was ready to dig in influenced me. The the U Street area, yeah. the places that were allowing uh, up and coming artists to perform and giving you a, a space, a platform. You didn't have to be big. Right. There was no one worrying about numbers or mm -hmm. worrying about algorithms. It was about can you crank? Right. Can you get on stage and do your thing? Right. Um, and so I met so many, I mean, I, I'm tripping right now because even some, some of your actual team here right well, you know one of your team members is one of the first people i ever had a band with right uh, shout out sam prather um uh, you know shout out sam. yeah sam. very sam first Michelle. very first band i ever mm -hmm. ever had and there were just so many musicians eager to to work with me, uh, vocalists and writers and so i was like a sponge and it just all infused into my sound everything from a little bit of that step pocket of the go-go mm -hmm. to some of that gospel and then there's just there was just so many like the R&B world was just, I mean, Eric Roberson was in, oh, yeah, Eric. you know, and Cy Smith Cy. and Yazara. There was just so many people that were inspiring me to not be shy about what I was doing and to get into it.
tomorrow bring Right now in this moment I just want to sing Cause I don't know which way the world is turned Just keep on walking through it Still willing to learn It's haze Don't know where the answers are I'm the type to take a day to day No, my fate will get me far This road seems so long Times I feel alone Better live my head And keep moving on I wonder if there's a reason for this Confused and broken Send me a temporary But you ain't seen nothing yet I'll just take it on the stride With the flow, the flow There is a light that lives inside of me I won't take it for granted Keeps this compass guiding me Living free, willing to believe I'm gonna find my way Shown with the possibilities Oh, yeah But you ain't seen nothing yet I'll just take it on the try Oh, I'll take it on the try Yeah, yeah, oh Try, try You better listen what your mama said Don't cry, don't cry Don't cry You know, one of the things we talked about a little earlier was about um, people don't understand the rich music culture of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, the 14th of U corridor with jazz yep. and, you know, D.C., the, the Bohemian Caverns was a stop off for Ella Fitzgerald yes. and the whole crew. Mm -hmm. So Blues uh, Alley. Oh, yeah. You know, legends. Phyllis Hyman. Right. Phyllis Hyman. There, Blues you know, Alley, yeah. Roberta Flack, yeah. you know, has a, a live album, I believe, that was uh, recorded at Mr. Henry's Jazz Club in D.C. Right. So much, so mm -hmm. much history here um, that I I feel honored to be a part of this community in this city. Like, it's, it's so it's so deep. It's a, yeah. a, a rich depth of, of music and culture and mm -hmm. art. Chocolate yeah. City, baby. Come on now. Yeah. So let me ask you, Devorah, when was the musical spark? When did you know? Oh man, this is what I, I'm about to do this, I'm about to go head in for music. For music. Well, I knew from uh, the moment I had a memory that I wanted to sing. What is that? I knew, I mean, I just, since I can remember having a memory, so maybe around four or five years old. Really? 
I don't know why. I didn't grow up singing in the church. Mm -hmm. I didn't I have that traditional upbringing musically. I always joke and say I was born into the funk. So I was mm -hmm. I was a, you know, a late 70s baby, so I was really born into the you know, uh, Parliament Funkadelic right. and all that stuff. Um, but for some reason, I always knew I wanted to sing since I can just remember there was mm -hmm. no real defining moment. So I really give that to the universe and to God. I believe that that was planted in me. But once I moved here, it, it, DC, it was really the people I began to surround myself with that made me think, okay, I can actually do, do this. this. Like I can do it. Like right. I can do this. Like he plays bass, he mm. plays drums, he plays keys. They have a couple of cool tracks. They want, they're looking for a singer. Right. They like my sound. Maybe I could really record a demo or record a record. Like I, it was, I have to give it to the people that were around me, mm -hmm. um, that welcomed me, that encouraged me and, um, it, it just opened it up. Yeah. So DC, like in a lot of ways, DC was a catalyst. Totally. Like the city was a catalyst for you to be 100%. Gabor Bond, solo well, artist. DC made me as an artist. Woo! DC made me. They shaped me. They, it, the, the, the rooms and the audiences, I joke that they hazed me. Oh, yeah. I had to, you know, DC don't play around. Yeah, you gotta, I know. You gotta show up and, and do your thing, right. you know, so. Uh, I feel like I came into my own. I learned how to present myself. I learned how to perform. I learned everything I learned here mm -hmm. and through all of the different uh, avenues that were open to me. And there were so many. So I love it. I, I give it all really to DC because I don't know if, if I was in any other city, what would have happened, especially if I was in New Haven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Deborah, we have come through we're like on the ending, we hope, mm -hmm. of the pandemic yeah. uh, with the coronavirus, uh, virus, excuse me. We've lost a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, God bless all the families, Yes. Uh, particularly for musicians mm -hmm. and creatives that, you know, travel and playing in rooms where there's assembly of a lot of people. Yeah. We, we have also gone through some stuff. Yes, we have. So as black man talking to black woman, mm -hmm. how have you coped you know, just on the basic level as a black woman in this world uh, during this pandemic? And then also, what about the, the arts? Like, mm -hmm. how did you negotiate those things? I coped by writing a record. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. were recording at home. I, I literally had decided at the end of 2019, I need to put new music out. I was going through all kinds of grown woman, black woman struggles mm -hmm. at that time between 2016 to about 2019, feeling quite lost, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I decided I needed to shed, you know, what I was feeling and what I was going through through the music. Um, and then the world shuts down right when I've come to this conclusion. And I had already been trying to find a new set of musicians to work with because I've been working with the same group for many years. Mm -hmm. And things were already kind of bubbling. But once, you know, March 2020 came and we all knew we were going to be sitting still for a while. I, um, it, you know, oh man, it was so, there were so many things happening. And I, I decided, okay, get your, get your space together, buy the microphones that you need, get whatever you need technically mm -hmm. to, help you sit in this house and create for mm -hmm. one because you need this kind of healing. But then on top of it, this hold up, this kind of healing, this kind of healing. Go ahead. That's that's what I was on the mission for. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, OK, we, we're freaking out. There's this virus. This is all happening. But then there is George Floyd. There are riots. There are D.C. was pretty intense, mm -hmm. you know, last spring. And so I just needed to write. I needed to write. I needed to share my experience as slightly a newly single woman kind of navigating life alone. Um, someone that was feeling a new level of fear for my brothers, for my black brothers. Mm -hmm. um, a really like severe level of fear for their lives, seeing what was happening. Um, you know, the George Floyd just opened up a lot of things for me with writing. And so there's a song on the on the new record called Burden um, that's basically just me showing love to the black man and just, you know, speaking on how I will always have your back. I, I will always love you no matter what this world tries to say about you, what stories are written about you, whatever truths may be spun about you. Um, and so for me, 
it was, it was, 2020 was just, just healing. It was healing for me. There was, ac there were actually some blessings in the whole thing for me. You know, this is a common thing. Every single artist that I have talked to, we have all had this introspective that we typically didn't have time for before. Yes. That we've gone inside of ourselves and produced something. Mm -hmm. that you, welcome to my Your healing. conversation, my healing. Yes. You know. Yeah. And um, and also of service. That's another thing. Being yes. of service. So yes. I want to thank you for burden. Sister, I appreciate that. That is my pleasure and my honor. And you know? I wanted to know, that leads to the next thing. I wanted to know what you're working on. Let's talk about this record. Yeah, so, so all in-house, all in-house. Uh, recorded I, yourself. Recorded myself in my living room, sat in a little chair for months and months and months and months. I had nothing else to do, right? You know, <laughs> um, found, you know, connected with some new musicians and a few of my good old friends. Mm -hmm. um, and said, hey, got a few ideas. This producer has an idea for this. Could you record keyboards at your house? Could you record drums at your place? Could you record violin at your place? And I literally um, reached out to my tribe and, and people that I felt a connection to, even new, a new tribe. Mm -hmm. And I am so blessed that, you know, folks were just open and down for me because they literally did the same thing. They recorded all their parts in their homes and everywhere from Percussion played in London, keys in, in LA, and uh, violin in Boston, and mm -hmm. drums in Nashville. Everybody just did their part. Shout out to Richmond, Virginia, because a lot of the musicians were based there, and mm -hmm. they really looked out for me. And um, I wanted the this album, Compass, Compass. Um, um, to really reflect what I felt my energy was and what my life was, and I think also a shift in what my brand was. Mm -hmm. And so I moved away from some of the bright, colorful, bubbly, ah, oh, life is everything, it's everything is so sweet and grand. <laughs> and what folks might have felt from my last album mm -hmm. to wearing a lot more black, um, recording and leaving mistakes, letting things have grit, mm. letting things feel vulnerable, letting things feel real, mm -hmm. um, having the artwork have no color, having the, wor the, the songs be one word and lowercase. Mm -hmm. I started to really dream up the significance of it all through last year, like wanting to show a vulnerable side of myself and a raw, that particular word, a raw and grittier side of myself. Um, and to sh we were in a time when just the world was not a pretty place, not mm -hmm. just America, but the world was suffering. And I felt like I needed to reflect, I needed to show that through the art. So Compass really does represent kind of feeling lost, midlife crisis for me, trying to find my way and, and letting the universe guide me to where I needed to be. And it guided me to these amazing musicians and mm. illustrators who, uh, who I commissioned to do all this artwork for the, for the booklet. And mm -hmm. um, it's so much about it is the most authentic I've ever presented myself. And also in the, the most scary way, because I was really nervous about the sound of the record being done at home. Um, it's a beautiful record. Thank you. And and when I listen to you speak, I think about uh, one of, I'm a paraphrase, one of James Baldwin's co uh, quotes is about art, that art it has a responsibility to be truthful so we can lead other people to their truths. Come on. Another thing of service. So, yes. Um, and I also find too for myself that when we are, we're artists are working on whatever medium, mm -hmm. um, the more, the longer we are in the game, the more authentic we become, the less afraid we become in telling the truth exactly. and letting people Show see. Show who we really are. Yeah. Show who we and, really and, are. And to be fair, who I was five years ago is very different than who I am now. That's right. And who I hope to be, you know, mm -hmm. in a year from now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, this record compass is some real, real, I was excuse me, real stuff. I was terrified to drop it. But I was I'm, terrified. But to I'm gonna tell it. you what, though. I have to also say, like, triple claps for you because you were like, "Look, I gotta do this," and you recorded at home. You recorded yourself. Yeah. That's a discipline in and of itself. I 
need a little patience with myself when I try to speed around what's right in front of me. I need a little patience with myself. I know how the story goes. The cards have been dealt. By now the pacing of my life Why do I try to believe things will come to me swiftly I've learned many times before The lanes can take a left turn And before you know you're down You're lying on the ground Slow, you're growing older. You better breathe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you had a little patience with yourself, yourself. Maybe if you take a moment to stop. Says destinations and signs say that you've arrived. So, thank bravo. you. <laughs> bravo to that one. Thank you, yeah. yeah. That, that was, uh, you know, I, I always say to get by with a little help from my friends. I'm, I'll make some calls. Mm -hmm. I'll, okay, you know, this plugin or this thing, how do I do this? And I have this preamp and I'm learning all this tech stuff. Right. And um, I had homies, you know, that would say, okay, Debo, plug, you know, do this. Your, your mic is in the wrong thing. Like, you know, yeah. helping me along the way. And I've done uh, voiceover work and I worked in radio oh, for, yeah. for 10 years. So I had the experience of recording myself at home, but not on this level, right. especially for jingles and voiceovers. But uh, this was the next next level with it. But and you get a triple clap on that one. I Definitely. Tried. <laughs> now, let me ask you. So if we look at Compass mm -hmm. and if you could name your musical DNA, mm -hmm. what would it be? Name my musical DNA. And you can pull from anywhere. What's in that helix of yours? What's in the helix? Well, for, for Compass, 
this particular DNA had a little bit of the energy of, uh, ooh, I was I was reaching back into like my Mary J. Blige mm-hmm. bag, um, uh, Brandy. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was definitely looking to the sisters of a very specific time in mm-hmm. music, kind of like the '90s, early 2000. Um, kind of like heavy drums, you know, okay. that that head nod kind of zone. But then there's this mixture of like, there's always going to be Shaka in the DNA. Yeah. The, the, because of the way I like to sing, the, because mm-hmm. of the way I like to arrange. So there's always going to be a little shock in the DNA. But it was really like a lot of uh, Faith Evans and Brandy. The 90s R&B. Boys to knocker. Men, some of oh. my arrangements. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I teamed up with a phenomenal songwriter named Gordon Chambers. Yes, Gordon. Co- Shout out Gordon Shout Chambers. Shout out Gordon, <laughs> who co-wrote Stride with mm-hmm. me, and um, that was my Anita Baker bag. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's a, the ladies of, of like 90s R&B. 90s R&B. So I, w- I wanted to go, and I, you know what's wild? I wanted to go back to New Haven because New Haven was where, you know, New Haven has a love for like hip hop, R&B. Mm-hmm. It's an urban, like, it's, a, it's an around the way city. People don't know that Connecticut has a city or two or three that right. exists like that, but I'm definitely from there. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to kind of like, I wanted a lot more like B-girl energy, swagadocious, like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that that particular, for this record, for yeah. this moment. So you, 90s, mm-hmm. black girl. Black girl. R&B soul. Yep, girls that it. were getting their flowers too. Re- yeah. Recently, you know, verses popped off during yeah. the whole pandemic. And so, you know, when Brandy and Monica had their verses, when Badu and Jill had their verses, it was just reminding me of all the sisters that like, at you know, that term giving them their flowers yeah. that was beginning to happen that are my generation, mm-hmm. not the, I love her. You right. know, I love some of the youngins coming up, but like, it was just beautiful to see this wave of like Generation X singers, <laughs> like right. my generation. And I, I was really going there with this this record. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. All right. So this comes to the anchor question of all the interviews. OK. I would like to know years 2050 mm-hmm. to Bourbon. We speak it as it is already happened. You are currently in that year mm-hmm. and you're speaking of what your legacy is. So what is DB legacy? Ooh, the legacy of DB is connection, is is the connector, is the one who will bond. Um, that. But don't bump. <laughs> no, go ahead, bond. Go ahead. I said that mm-hmm. for a reason because I I do feel like part of a part of my purpose, uh, even even Deborah in the Bible, um, her oh story, break it down. Her story, you know, was to kind of guide people, lead people, connect people, unite people, empower people, um, to serve people. So for me, the music, the legacy will will always be about helping others, servicing others, making other people feel seen, making other people feel not alone, uh, unification, connection, bonds. No matter who you pray to, no matter who you love, no matter what tone of your skin, what your hair is like, how much you weigh, if you got lots of money, little money, there's a common thread in music that will always be a unifier. And I just kind of, that my legacy will be to, my legacy is to just hold on to that unity and that common human being connection. Because we all have, we all have those threads. I love it. We all have it. So, yeah. Let me say, I got, I got a little, little misty up here because every who I consider to be my peer group especially including you mm-hmm. everybody has mentioned somewhere or another service yes and it just makes me feel like I'm mm. with my people you you God don't make no mistakes we we we're drawn to each other there you go we're drawn to each other and as as artists we are always going to be of, of service I mean, if your heart is in the right place and you're doing the authentic and it doesn't matter, you could be you could be of service, dropping it like it's hot. Yeah. But it's all about the intention. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about the intention. How about we just keep being of service and um, this record? Congratulations. 
Thank you again for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Oh, Thank you for doing this and giving us this platform. Oh, nah. We need it. We appreciate it. It's everybody. It's all good. No it's problem. Indeed. All right. So I'm Russell Taylor, and this is Deborah Bond, and this episode of Conversations. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Come on, come on. You wanna party with me? Come on, come on. Sober stations, you wanna party with me? Come on, come on. It's just another sad love story. Different circumstances still plays the same. Boy meets girl. Girl falls in love Two people dance that dance again But as usual, it may not have been the right timing Still we try to make it last Why must it feel so good? Can't help ourselves, we move so fast And it's a shame for the losing side of the game Let's do what's best for us And write a classic love song for the radio Sing it beautiful, baby Playtime is over Let's lay it down today I hope that you hear me Cause I really I've never really been one to believe in fairy tales, but honey, you bring out my inner child. Laugh and play with you, living the life of the free, free, free and wild. But as the story goes, may not have seen what's up ahead. Now these words are hard. But never, never want you out of my life It's a, it's a shame, a shame, a shame for us The losing side of the game Let's do what's best for us And write a 
Okay, DeBoer Bond, so listen, this is the part of Soul Versations, it's called the lightning round, which means five questions, five rapid answers. You can't change the question, because we always do, if you know, <laughs> not what you want. But like, you would do your best, and if you have to, we can pass, but okay. let's try. Okay, okay, five, lightning round, here we go. Okay. If you had your choice of doing a show with any artist, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh boy, it would be probably Prince. Ooh, good one. That's okay. first thing came to mind. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, who are you listening to now? I'm listening to a singer named Leanne Le Havis. She is fire. I love her. And I still think she's got... She, people don't even know yet. She's so dope. Yeah. This last record. Mm -hmm. Solo. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Next one. Uh, time Capsule. You have to put a couple of things in the time capsule. Most important things about Debo's life here on Earth. What would they be? Give me three. Be some piece of vinyl. Not going to say which one, but some vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, a really tasty piece of food. <laughs> I'm a foodie. Yeah, um, and you cook your tail off, too. I, I'll cook. I'm, I don't come from a family of cooking folks, so uh -huh. um, some, something yummy to snack on. Okay. Um, mm, mm, some vegetables. Vegetables. Be on, be snack on, cause I, I, Cause something, something from the earth, something from the earth. Yeah, cause these days yeah. we don't even know what's gonna be around. Whether that be a crystal, whether it be oh. some, whether it be some hematite, something okay. from the, something from the, the elements. Okay. Um, mm, 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 mm. We take that. A you, bottle of red wine. Oh, red wine. <laughs> See, I would put some whiskey in there, but that's not. It's not my capsule. Hey, close. man, maybe a little bit of that too. <laughs> okay. Um, something you I'm, got it. You hit it. I hit it. You hit it. Boom. There okay. We go. There we go. So, next question: What is your favorite thing about Washington D.C.? The music. Okay, and I did one, two, three, and mumbo four. Sauce. Mumbo <laughs> sauce. We can throw that in there. Okay, mumbo sauce. Shout out mumbo sauce. <laughs> if you don't know, you gotta know. All right. So the last and final. Oh, what is a book? that is like your go-to warm thing of your life favorite book favorite book um and i was always uh written up for not being much of a reader growing up okay so that's a but uh a book called effortless mastery effortless mastery is like i keep returning to it it is something that most artists and musicians should check out i cannot remember the author's name he's a musician himself it's okay. but it's all about the mental approach to being a creator mm -hmm. and getting over your ego and doing it for the right reasons and having the right intentions with it and how it can change what you consider being a master of your craft effortless mastery you pass lightning round ah shout out <laughs> thank you thank you for playing the thank you for having me